How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Junluca, aka Dr. Calcano. I am a final year resident doctor in family medicine, at least most of the time. By day, that's what I'm doing. But for the purposes of this video, I am a professional exam taker. I am someone that has been shaped by the system through years and years and years, and you all will be eventually too. But on the other side of all of this, I want to share some of the best strategies and tips that I've developed over the years, because it doesn't stop after the MCAT. I wrote the MCAT six years ago. It was a very important exam for me. I got a 95th percentile on the MCAT. Then I did step one, step two. Now I'm getting ready for my final board exams right now, the Canadian as well as the American boards. And I have so many tips and different ways that I wish I knew about before six years ago when I was still a pre-med trying to get into medical school. And I think that what I've done with this video is schedule and structure one of the best study plans for the MCAT, hopefully to help you get an amazing score. Now, let's just be honest. What are we talking about when we say a great score? 517. 517 to 520. I need you to write that down. That's what you're shooting for. It is going to open the doors to so many different programs. Now for today's video, I'm actually working with a company that you, you've definitely heard of before, and I'm really excited to be working with them, but it's The Exam Crackers. They've been around since the 90s and they've set themselves up as one of the premier prep companies when it comes to getting ready for the MCAT. They have a brand new product called Crack U that I'll talk about later on. No one else is offering something like this right now. It basically has everything that you might possibly need to do amazing on the MCAT at a very reasonable price. But what I first wanna talk about is exactly how you should set up studying, what the schedule looks like, and all the tips that I have now as a doctor that I wish that I had when I was studying as a pre-med. So we're gonna get right into it. Don't wanna waste anyone's time. You can always skip ahead in the video if you wanna watch something over again or see a particular thought that I had on a certain topic. But the plan is broken down into three steps plus a step zero. It is a three month plan, and this assumes that you have three months set aside to study and prepare for this MCAT like it is your full time job. If you don't have those three months set aside, then I would advise a little bit longer, especially if you're aiming for one of these top scores, maybe four to four and a half months. But if I if I can just say, you know, from working with students for so many years, I would highly recommend to do whatever you need to do to treat this prep like it is your full time job in the long run, especially to those of you that could get into medical school after applying just once or twice because of a great MCAT score, the money that you lose out and not being able to work part or full time for those three months gets repaid multiple times over by not needing to spend so much money and applying cycle after cycle after cycle to get into medical school. So that's the first piece of knowledge that I wanna share with people. Okay, so the first step in my plan is the step zero and the principle, the medical working as a doctor principle that I wanna tie to this one is the concepts of knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, and minimizing the space about not knowing what you don't know. The very first thing that you're gonna be doing with step zero, I call this the ramp up, is you want to go and find a document that outlines everything that is going to be tested on the MCAT. I'll put an example of one supplied by CrackU up on the screen here, but you'll want to go through and see exactly what it is that you need to prepare for. Because if you want a top tier score, what you need to do is minimize the amount of things that you've never seen before. You can't go into this exam with ambiguity and coming across a question or a stat or a fact that you've never seen before because even missing 10, 20, 30 points on this exam could really change where you rank up. With the document in front of you and in keeping with the step zero part of this plan, what you'll want to do is go through and review the things only that you know that you know, that you came across them already in your undergrad degree and you are just trying to consolidate them at this time. Whether that's going over the Krebs cycle or glycolysis or organic chemistry, wherever your strengths are, go through the topics, find the things that you already know and brush up on them so that you could solidify and know that you know these things. You set it into that part of your organizer. Now, one thing that I'll say is that at the height of your studying, it is not uncommon and I would actually recommend that you you build up to about eight to ten hours of studying every single day for about five to six days a week depending on what you could tolerate. The thing is though is that for many people you're not going to be used to this level of studying. The MCAT is something that many people, especially if this is your first time writing it, you haven't come across it before. That's why step one, step two, the Canadian boards, at least you have the experience of having gone through the MCAT already so you understand what this level of studying is. In the step zero part, especially if this is new for you, I would recommend slowly pacing yourself in that first week. Start with four hours on day one, maybe four and a half to five, and slowly build up so you're about six or seven hours by the end of the week per day with your breaks, however you need them. And just remember that in this first week, what you need to be doing is keeping track of the things that you know that you don't know so that you'll come back to them later on in the next step 
but being very careful about the things that you don't know that you don't know. And the reason why I'm so particular with this is because you learn this when you're going through the emergency department or when you're on a particular service as a doctor, that is the scariest place to be, to think that you know a topic, but then really you don't know it. And then it's just you in the emergency department and someone comes in with a condition that you've never seen before. And that's a very scary situation. So the emphasis here is on organizing in this step zero, exactly how you should move through the rest of your plan. And then at the end of your step zero, the very last thing, graduation from this step is a full length practice MCAT, the full eight hour exam start to finish with your appropriate breaks and give it your best shot. Close the book. You've gone over all the things that you know that you know, and, and use it as a diagnostic. See exactly where it is that you are, and don't be discouraged if it comes back that it's a little bit lower than you need to be. If it's higher, that's always a good thing, but I'll say really give it a fair best try so that you could honestly assess the degree of study and how intensely the next couple of months are going to be playing out for you. Okay, now you move on to step one. Step one is the first real month of your studying and the clinical principle that I want you to apply here from my experience as a doctor now is the importance of practicing under pressure. In my opinion, and from the students that I've worked with, I think that many people are spending way too long on content review. I think that they are sitting for months and months at a time, reading passages and doing things ineffectively, when really what you need is one month start to finish of focused reading with appropriate highlighting and practicing questions so that you consolidate your learning right away. So on that note, let me just talk about exactly what you want in terms of an at-home MCAT study resource and why I think the exam crackers University is, is definitely the top tier in terms of at home studying and keeping track of what you're learning and focusing on the things that you really need to know. First of all, at a high level, all of the checklists that we talked about previously in terms of the different things that you're to be following along with and what you know and what you don't know is tightly integrated into the different chapters as you go through. So much so that after every individual chapter, there are questions that relate specifically to the different sections you could compare how difficult those questions were and how you stack up against other people that are actively studying for the MCAT. And then in addition, with the tight integration, you could check off directly on the double AMC checklist to follow exactly what it is that you still need to learn. So for example, if I just read through the section on the atomic scale, I would come in here, answer the questions, and then help me keep track of the fact that I've already gone over this section. In addition though, one of the things that I really like about exam crackers is that they differentiate because it's a really common question from students as to how much level of detail do they have to get into for every particular subject. They let you know exactly what is likely to be tested on and what they call to be too much information. So you could always go through, read the things that you think are likely to be tested on and then go over depending on how much level of detail you want to learn to consolidate certain topics. But they do stratify it so that you focus on what is important with the actual time that you're able to sit down studying so that you don't get lost in information that's not really that important. And on the topic of trying to understand what's important when you're reading through chapters, because there is so much material to know on the MCAT, one of the exercises that is unique to hyperbooks, you can't really get with in-person books, is comparing your highlighting to the author's highlighting in order to identify which information you think is the most important. So you have options to come through with different colors, highlight certain key facts as you're reading through, and then afterwards move the cursor over to the EK section and see if what you highlighted is the most important part of that summary that you read through. All of that so far just represents the high level. There's a video library of hundreds of videos going through lectures on everything that you'll read if you're the type of person that also likes to consolidate with video learning as well, especially for the topics that are just a little bit more challenging for you. Like one of the things that I really liked videos for when I was learning was organic chemistry reactions because in my opinion, seeing how the different uh, electrons move around in certain organic chemistry reactions in a video is a lot more helpful than reading it directly from the book. So you have that flexibility with a hyperbook in being able to read something and then finding that exact section in the video library as well that links up direct, like it's tailor-made for the text that you just read. You could pin certain key topics as you're reading them or add them to your bookmarks and revisit them later on. There's even diagrams and different games that you could use to further help consolidate knowledge and memorize lists of things that you need to know, especially when it comes to memorizing the amino acids, 
which is something that you definitely need to commit to memory on the MCAT. There's a whole game dedicated specifically on identifying the amino acids quickly so that you're not losing that time when you're getting ready for the MCAT. For those of you that have been on the channel for a while, you know that I really don't do many video sponsorships here. And a big part of that is I have to find something that I actually think is going to be a big help. This has everything that you might possibly need. It's even, it creates like a fun study environment too. And I think myself having gone through it and having gone through many exams since then, that's the most important part, keeping you engaged for long periods of time. And I think it's all of these things together that makes a good study resource. So do with it what you will. But I'll say too that the last part that I want to talk about is just the sheer number of different practice questions and exams that you get, like full length practice exams, which you'll need now in the second half of the study program. But all included in the same price, you have access to 10 full length practice exams, all of the resources that we already talked about, the full video library that is tailor made to the resource that you're studying off of, and flashcards for those of you that really want to focus on a few specific key topics that you need to commit to memory and you could use the flashcards cards to help with that as well. And you get all of this, everything that we just talked about for an amazing price. There's a seven day free trial, no commitment at all. And if you want to get the three month plan, it's about 500 bucks, which is basically what you're going to be paying for books and additional tests. Anyways, this keeps everything together. And I think it's a great deal. You can read about treating heart attacks all day, especially in the first half of medical school. But really when it clicks for the first time is when you're there and you're seeing it and you're writing the orders and you're reviewing the ECG, reviewing the labs, and then you know afterwards exactly what it is that you have to do. And that's when things just become second nature, when you had that practice under pressure. And it should be the same way when you're getting ready for an exam, especially with the MCAT. And that's why my focus would be on the practice questions as you read and not just reading something without dedicated review of that topic that you just went over. Now I'll put an example uh, up on the screen of what a schedule might look like in terms of what topics you're combining on, on different days. But I'll say that part's flexible. You could decide that for yourself if you want to do bio and psych one day and then chem and sociology or however it is that you want to do it. What I will say though, is that in my opinion, cars needs to be done every single day. And you could take the passages from wherever you want, but you need to be practicing cars cars every single day if you're going for one of those top scores. I've made a video, a full guide on it in the past. If you want to check it out, I will link it up here. The takeaway from step one though, is that this is your knowledge review month. 30 days, five to six days per week with whatever study schedule you're working out, you're going to do one practice exam every second week just to track your progress and see that you are improving, especially in the topics that before you knew that you didn't know. Now, after a month of studying, you've built yourself up to a full eight hours a day. You're not getting fatigued. You've adapted to the stress of being able to study for that long. The second part of the study schedule is doing practice tests and focusing on reviewing your full length practice tests to see where the gaps in your knowledge are and going back to your knowledge review, or even if you haven't finished certain topics and putting way more attention into those spots that you know you really need the help with. The second part of this study plan is called triage and triage works as it's taken straight from my experience as a doctor, same thing. You're in the emergency department, you have 50 people in your waiting room, someone comes in with a gunshot wound. In that case, you have to pay particular attention to the people that are higher up on your triage list. And it's using that as a study concept here to help with the MCAT that I would really recommend. There's no point in going over the same things that you know and that you've seen over and over again. And that's why the focus of month two is definitely around studying the things that you have the most trouble with. For month two, I would say it's one full length practice exam every week. If you're studying Monday to Saturday, you do the exam on the Friday and the Saturday you take that entire day and focus just on reviewing the answers, going over not only what you got wrong, but why you got it wrong and going back and circling what you need to work on, what you need to review again in order to not get it wrong in the future. Final part of the study plan is month three. In month three, by the time you get here, you should have at least a high level understanding of every possible thing that can be tested on the MCAT and a very in-depth understanding of the core parts of it. The last part of the study guide is understanding that the MCAT is an exam, which means it's a game. You have to game this exam. And I don't care if it's a medical school exam. I don't care if it's a USMLEs or your board exam. You learn to understand that all of these different exams ask their questions in a certain way. And the longer you've been around, the more that you're doing this, you begin to identify patterns with how the questions show up and even using what's in the question itself to eliminate certain answers. For this reason, the final part about your, your studying is to do one practice exam every three days, or you're going to work up to that. And it is in this last month that you're going to incorporate finally the four full length practice exams from the AAMC website. 
these are a crucial resource that it doesn't matter what study company you're using or what books you're using, you need to use these as well. There are so many similarities between the styles of questions that you'll see with the official double AMC practice questions and what you'll see on the official MCAT. There's even some stories sometimes of people seeing replica questions or questions that are basically the exact same thing. And you'll get those points from using the double AMC practice questions. With step three in this plan, I would advise one practice exam every three days. So it's study Monday, Tuesday, write the exam. And then the next day afterwards is all of the review and going back and doing the same thing that you did in the second step, but really tuning in and going over why you got certain questions wrong and how you could work on it in the future. I think one final thing that I want to say about this exam plan is that I personally was never the biggest fan of people's mentalities saying that, you know, if I didn't do this particular undergrad or um, if I didn't have this previous experience that I'm not going to do good on the MCAT. And you hear stories every now and then of someone that's only studied for a month or a month and a half, all of these Reddit posts and they got a 525 or something like that. And that's not what this plan is for. This plan here is designed so that anyone watching this video right now, I truly believe that if you give it a full three months of it being your full time job with this plan that I just outlined, you're going to do great on the exam. And sometimes there's some outside factors. You might get a little bit nervous on the day, but if you could learn the, the inside and out material of the MCAT, you are setting yourself up for eventual success. And I think that this method here is definitely the most reliable. You will get good results with it. I've seen it already in many students that I've worked with already, but feel free to tweak it around. If you notice that you're a little bit ahead of the curve or a little bit behind the curve, you can always expand or contract different parts of this plan. But that's how you want to get ready for the MCAT. People still ask me to this day how I did it. And this isn't exactly how I did it, but it's how I've learned and how I wish I did it. I think that I would have had a much better time getting ready for it and also would have had an even higher score than I was able to achieve. But in any case, I wish you guys all the best of luck, however you choose so you're ready for it. Uh, I really hope this helped. Please go ahead and leave me some feedback in the comment section below. If you liked the video, feel free to like the video and all the best. Uh, I wish you the best with it because it's such an important exam. And even six years later, uh, the memories of studying haunt me to this day. <laughs> even, you know, all the other exams, the USMLEs, the board exams, whatever, th the pressure is still there. Um, but like this determines whether or not you get into medical school and it, it sucks. And I, I know you guys are going through it, but stay with it. Give it your best shot and study like this and you're going to do great. And we'll see you all in the next one. So good luck.